international law, which brought in things like passports, which brought in things like the concept that the created is greater than the creator, which of course is an absurdity, but that is the basis of international law, absurdity. But you heard me say the common law is dead because of this new system. Well, I want to qualify that now. I want to qualify it by a certain element in their system. Not that I'm suggesting that you want to spend a whole lot of time in their system honouring their various policies, considering how perverse they are, but it's yet another important thing to remember. Now, you know that there's been many people who have been convinced and told that you have certain, quote-unquote, common law rights to travel down a highway, common law rights to engage in certain things, and they can't touch it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that has been misconstrued. There are indeed ancient rights defined by Anglo-Saxon law, but in most cases they have been enclosed or they have been claimed, or they are now deprived from us, such as being a real tenant. Remember the other day we spoke about the fact that if you see on your mortgage that you are a tenant in common, you are a ward tenant. You are not a true tenant in the classic sense under Anglo-Saxon law. You are uh, effectively uh, one who has no rights other than the whim of the lord of the manor. However, if one faces a state court or a local court or even indeed a federal court where certain charges are brought against you under certain statutes and those statutes are clearly in contradiction to the statutes of the United Kingdom and indeed in contradiction to the canon law of the Vatican then one may appeal to the fact that it is in contradiction to the higher estate and one may then evoke a common law right by being specific to the statutes of the United Kingdom or indeed the clauses or the canons of canon law to highlight to the fact that the lower estate that still belongs to the global matrix controlled by the kingdom of ideas, that they are in contravention. Now, how the system has survived for so long is that if a local plantation and the elite of that plantation decide to create some crazy law, that that law can be held to account when someone challenges it as being in contradiction. I want to share that with you because there is relevance. When I speak to you about being able to challenge a warrant, this can be regarded as a common law right because it is still in effect on the books in the United Kingdom that you have the right to question and challenge the veracity and the validity of a warrant but you need to be specific to the statute and not simply regard it as some generic common law right. So I hope for some of you that find yourself in cases where they are complex, that being able to look to the statutes of the United Kingdom, of the Commonwealth, and indeed to the Vatican's own canon law, is one way of holding the lower plantation to account. Now you notice I didn't say to the national because one of the mistakes that people make is to believe that for example the state, let's say the state of California or the state of Texas is then beholden only to the laws of the United States. It's not. There's a dotted line back to the Commonwealth and the Commonwealth is the United Kingdom and is still subject to the broader plantation. And then from there up to the Triple Crown, the Vatican. Well, the time available, 
I still want to get to the theme for tonight, the power of you, and I want to cover now the question of the UCC filing in Maryland, which I know has excited many. I sent a, a couple of copies of this, and I sent by one who's a brilliant researcher, a man who's done some fantastic work, and I wrote back to him when I read this, because when I read this, even though the numbers are astronomical, there's never been a, a larger lien put forward. And in this case, this is a UCC filing in several parts by the US Treasury for $14.3 trillion. But there are several parts that really contradicted even the most basic lodgement of a UCC. But these documents are located on Maryland and it appears that, that the uh, Treasury and, and in certain parts have set up a massive claim and lien, the largest in history, by claiming ownership of us as property, as collateral. Well, whether it is true or not, it is worth, being, it is worth having it exposed. But what I would suggest is these documents may well come down from that site within a week or so, and their lodgement doesn't necessarily mean that they are valid. Remember, many of you have lodged UCC filings far more accurately, far more accurately than the ones on Maryland, and you have not seen the benefit of them. Just because they're lodged doesn't mean they will honour them. And by honouring them, I mean that they recognise it as a valid debt and therefore as a negotiable instrument. Instead, what we might be seeing is them using a technique that they've used against us over and over again. And that technique is that they encourage people to lodge UCC filings. They then regard them as illegitimate whether or not they are criminal is, a, is another thing, but illegitimate. And therefore, a debt is created just by the fact that it is illegitimate and that they can then sell that debt as a fraction of its face value. They can fractionalize that debt. And that is the inherent design of the UCC. The UCC is a debt creation factory whether or not a UCC filing is legitimate or not. And this is why they have made billions of dollars, and I mean billions of dollars, from the pain and sweat of those that have lodged thousands of UCC filings over the years in the belief that they might save their home, they might see remedy. And maybe, maybe the purpose of the filing is to try and encourage more activity to try and save their hides by getting more and more people to put in outrageously sized liens against them in the hope then that they can disavow them whether or not they pursue people legally and then they can do what they've been doing for years and years, fractionalise and sell those debts. Well, if nothing else, it is proof that we're dealing with sick, sick, mentally ill people. Well, in the few minutes left, I want to return to the opening thing. <clears throat> and I'll have a quick drink for a moment. The power of you. I need to cover some of the talks elements tonight because they were from questions you've asked, things you wanted to find out, and research that we've done. But I want to finish tonight with this theme of the power of you and remind each of us about a realisation that is built into UK and into UCA. When UCA seeks to express a structure of the universe as is defined in what is called the journey of UCA, which you can go to on UKDIA.com, the journey of UCA from the perspective of nothing right up to the largest objects in the universe. A statement is made. 
if one point of UCA ceased to exist, the universe would cease to exist. This is not a statement open for negotiation. It is a statement of absolute fact. The reference of existence requires that every object has relative position. And for every object in the universe to have relative position, it must have objects above it, below it, to the left of it, to the right of it, in front of it, and behind it. And because every object, and the most simplest object being a point, an idea, a point in space without any volume or measurement, it means the universe is constantly creating infinite reference points to sustain existence. Well, what does it mean in English? Because I know what I've said may sound a bit complicated, but please go and have a look if you haven't already. Go and read The Journey of UCA. Let me put it another way. If one part of one cell of your body ceased to exist, everything would cease to exist. Everything. You are made up of trillions and trillions of cells. Now, you may look at your life and say that you are unable to work because of an injury. You may look at your life and say that you are unable to move because you have no money. You may look at your life and say you are unable to do anything because you are under attack. I say to you, you have the power if you feed the most powerful thing in your life, the thing that they are trying to control and build the largest concept and system in the world in history to control, and that is your mind. If you haven't read the covenant of you of one heaven, I, I urge you to read it. If you haven't read the, the canons, I urge you to read it. If you haven't read the journey of UCA, I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to read non-Eucadian material too. But don't get suckered into the situation where you find excuses for your life. Eucadia will have the workbenches up and running. We will have the charters in place. We will have the money turned on. But if you come to this with the wrong attitude, where it's my job or someone's else's job to save you, you've got it in the wrong, possession, wrong position. No one can save you but you. No one can save you but you. You are in control of your own life. I know I sound harsh when I say this, but we, some, we get sucked in too often into a system that promotes a welfare mentality. If you don't have a job, then fix your home. If you don't have food, then plant some crops. If you don't have a way of, of, of doing something useful around the home or crops, or go and help someone else. But don't sit around playing computer games. Don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself. It's only when you have the right attitude combined with the right tools that we will see the world change. Well, that's it for me today in the, in the, in the introduction. I thank you for listening. I look forward to answering your questions and your comments now. And thanks very much. Let's have a look at the questions. Thank you. And remember, if you want to put a question into the chat for me to answer, just put in QUESTION in all caps. If you want to talk to us online, and I would love to hear from you, just press star 8 or hash 8 uh, to get into the queue. And I'd love to speak with you. Thanks very much. Okay, we have uh, East Pennsylvania, so we'll just start with East Pennsylvania. Hello, East Pennsylvania. <laughs> 